Today, we have um, as our guests for the first time um, uh, people from Asia, um, or arguably, well, one person from Asia and two people who are in Asia. They are in China. Uh, we have uh, Lo Fei and uh, Vera van de Nieuwenhof, and both, together with Sean Duffy, founded KISS, the Kunming International Situationist Society. Kunming is the capital of Yunnan province, which is in the southwest of China, and it's close to the borders of Myanmar, Laos, and Vietnam. And because of that has over the last 20 years or so uh, become a more and more important city in relation to business for the Southeast Asian um, uh, part of the continent. It's a city, Greater Kunming has about 7 million people, uh, which uh, I think first time I learned about this, I think it's fascinating. It's like one of those many cities in China that although maybe Kunming you've heard of, but there are many others that are of the same size that you probably have never heard of. And they have more people living in them than some countries in Europe do. Uh, it's uh, fascinating. Uh, Kunming has a very long history, and that uh, really goes back to its uh, pivotal position on the Southern Silk Road. Um, but it was also, uh, and that is something that uh, is for me uh, of uh, more personal interest, the birthplace of Zheng He. And uh, Zheng He was uh, in the around the start of the uh, 15th century, so in the beginning, at the beginning of the 1400s, he was a uh, Muslim admiral and diplomat and explorer who, under the Ming Dynasty or during the Ming Dynasty, uh, sailed on huge wooden ships from China to Africa and, according to some, even to the Americas. Fascinating stuff. Um, we uh, so uh, Lo Fei, who um, uh, is wearing a beautiful uh, black cap. Uh, in our meeting today. Um, oh, before I uh, introduce uh, the guests, uh, I also want to point out that uh, we are on the cusp of the Year of the Ox. Um, and um, one thing that uh, I really like about uh, the uh, Chinese zodiac is that there are stories associated with uh, all the years that uh, are represented by animals. And the Year of the Ox is the, um, the ox is the second animal in the Chinese zodiac, and the first is the rat. And um, uh, it, the first is the rat, and the second is the ox because the ox was expected to be first, but the rat tricked him into uh, ending up being second because the rat asked the ox for a ride, a lift to, uh, I think, an emperor a long time ago. And just as they were about to arrive, the rat jumped off the ox's back in front of the ox and was the first to arrive at the emperor. And because of that is the first animal of the Chinese zodiac and the ox is only the second. Um, so uh, trickery uh, was afoot already back then. So we have Lofe as uh, one of our two guests. He is uh, a curator, artist, and writer who lives and works in Kunming. Um, he is engaged in multimedia art, uh, including uh, things like field recordings and performance art. Uh, and he pays particular attention to situational, the situational construction of daily life and, um, well, the personal spiritual narration in the context of global capitalism. Um, he majored in printmaking in 2004 at the Fine Arts College of uh, Yunnan Arts University, and he also spent that same year walking everywhere. Uh, he worked, I think worked, uh, no longer works, as a curator and gallery director at TCG Nordica, which is uh, one of Kunming's foremost galleries. And in 2014, while he was working there, he wrote a book, The Start from Art, which is a collection of essays and interviews on Chinese contemporary art and on um, the a-cultural landscape in transition. And I have a few questions about that later. Uh, our second guest is uh, Vera van de Nieuwenhof, who studied architecture, uh, architectural history, excuse me, at the University of Amsterdam. She worked as a cultural producer in both Amsterdam and Rotterdam, uh, developing and producing events and lecture programs for both Het Nieuwe Instituut, uh, which is uh, the new institute, that's an easy translation to Engl English in Rotterdam, and the Institute of Network Cultures in Amsterdam. In 2016, she uh, did the thing that uh, for non-Dutchies uh, sounds, uh, well, is amazing, but sounds more amazing for non-Dutchies, um, because when uh, I, I lived in Mongolia for a while and um, 
when I was there every week, somebody would cycle by and this would be someone from the Netherlands. They were cycling from Holland to Beijing mostly. Uh, but uh, uh, Vera did not cycle to Beijing. She cycled from Holland to Japan. So she went a little bit further and she did this in 2016. And she eventually settled in Yunnan, where she, uh, through this, satisfied a lifelong fascination for China. And uh, although she was based in Kunming for a while, she is now uh, almost around the corner from, uh, sorry, in Kunming. Did I say Kunming or did I say Beijing? Uh, she was based in Kunming, but she lives, uh, she, lives, she lives around the corner from Kunming now, a mere 350 kilometers away. <laughs> in uh, the uh, town uh, or a region, town region of Dali, uh, which is very popular with uh, tourists. It's also very pretty. Um, where she also runs, I think, an artist in residency program. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, Lofay and Vera and Sean Duffy, who is not with us, in 2018 founded KISS, the Kunming International Situationist Society, which is a small and informal group of uh, Chinese and international artists and theorists who practice situationist related art and activities in a Chinese context. The group's initial aim was to reread, reread, discuss and practice ideas inspired by the situationists in the context of contemporary Chinese society, which they find provides a unique and stimulating backdrop against which to reappraise uh, the Boers and the Situationists' ideas. That's my introduction. I'll hand over now to uh, Vera and Lofay, who will tell a little bit about their work and their interests and their experiences and their uh, conclusions. Um, and then after that, uh, I'll have a bunch of questions. And um, as um, uh, I mentioned, uh, you can jump in at any time with a question that you might have or a remark. But if you do so, please mention who you are and where you are. Um, and with that, Vera and Lofe, it's up to you. Oh, thank you. That's a, that's a great introduction. Uh, you did your homework uh, very well. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you also for the, for the insights in, uh, in China and Chinese culture. Um, I will briefly introduce myself and then I will give the word to Lofe. Um, and then we will talk a little bit about our collective and a little bit more um, about the art scene in, in Kunming in, uh, in general. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, I haven't seen this many foreigners together <laughs> in a long time. Um, my name is Vera van den Uh I'm Dutch. Um, I'm living in a recently restored traditional courtyard home in a very small village outside Dali. Um, so Yunnan is China's most diverse province, as in there live many different minorities here, people who are not Han Chinese. Uh, there are still remnants of uh, the Mongolian invasion in the 15th century. Uh, there are Muslim areas. Uh, but my village is uh, the Pai minority, Pai Tzu minority. Um, so even if my Chinese was better, I would still have a hard time speaking with my neighbors because they speak uh, the Pai Tzu, Pai Tzu language. Um, still, I love it here. Uh, Dali is a tourist destination that is two hours away from Kunming by the fast train. Uh, it's very popular. Um, this year is quiet because of the, the COVID situation, but usually the, the old town is very crowded. Um, my village is situated between uh, a long mountain range and a lake, Arhai Lake, that stretches from north to south. So it's got uh, excellent feng shui. And right now the, the mountains, uh, they rise up to about 4,000 meters and, and they're covered in snow. So it's, it's quite beautiful. Um, as Babak mentioned, uh, I came to Yunnan by bicycle. And before I went on that big bicycle journey for Virtual Platform, which was the Dutch umbrella organization for digital art and culture. Uh, I worked there together with uh, Klaas, who is also in this meeting. Um, and this organization later merged into the, the much larger uh, Nieuwe Institute. 
uh, where I produced weekly lecture and debate program for architects and designers, and I also organized workshops. Uh, I have worked for the Institute of Network Cultures, um, yeah, and I hold a degree in architectural history from the University of Amsterdam, which I did, uh, I started that about 10 years ago, so I did that while, while I was working, I did it alongside work. Um, Let's see, I decided to settle in Yunnan um, because on this long bike journey, you come through many places, but uh, Yunnan really resonated with me. Um, it's not just this lifelong fascination with China, it's also the, the incredible diversity in, in, in people, in nature, in landscapes, in cultures. Um, and my first dream when I settled here was that I wanted to share my love of this province with uh, the rest of the world and to affect cultural exchange and intercultural dialogue. Um, because as we read the news, uh, views of China in the West are generally not very uh, nuanced. Um, and of course, as everywhere, there is a big difference between uh, politics and the people that you meet on the ground. And um, so, yeah, I, I want to share my experiences here with the people here, uh, the culture, the artists, the nature, everything. Um, in Kunming, I worked as a cultural events producer as well for a company called Cloudbridge, which is an international uh, tourism marketing uh, agency. Uh, we built websites, uh, we produced videos, we organized events. Um, most of our clients were local governments, such as the Yunnan Commerce Bureau or the Lijiang Tourism Bureau. Um, for instance, uh, we made a video uh, showcasing uh, local cultural heritage. Uh, we made a documentary and I organized uh, the premiere, which was held in the middle of Green Lake in Kunming. Uh, I was also, for the last year, I was the editor of Go Kunming, which is an online English language platform for uh, foreigners who live in Yunnan. Uh, for people who would like to visit the province as tourists or people who would like to do business here. Uh, it's been in existence for since uh, 2005, so it's, it's ancient by uh, internet standards. Um, but a few months ago, I decided to go freelance, um, motivated by the events of last year, COVID. Uh, made me reevaluate my life and again realize why I wanted to be here is uh, affect cultural exchange, enjoy the nature and the culture. So I started my own company. Um, I now organize cultural events with uh, some budget from the Dutch consulate. And next to that, I also work as a freelance editor, writer, um, and I will be taking up some tour guiding work across China. Uh, let's see. Um, well, to conclude, um, for me uh, here in Yunnan, uh, a lot of seemingly random interests are finally coming together. Uh, architecture and urban design, uh, arts, a desire to get lost and to disconnect from online noise, um, an all too common struggle with uh, internet and smartphone dependency and a long time interest in situationist practice, which I almost see as a, as a therapy for this addiction. Um, so that's where I would like to leave it for now. Uh, I would like to introduce my friend Lufe. He is one of the first people uh, I met in Kunming. Uh, he is also a cyclist, uh, but most of all, an independent artist and curator. Okay, over to you, Lufe. Hi, thank you, Vera. Thank you for your very nice introduction. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to give my brief introduction about myself. Um, uh, yeah, I was born and grew up in Chongqing, another city in southwest of China, which has now, I think, more than 30 million population. So when I first time came to Kunming in the year of 2000, I found Kunming in a small city. 
yeah, I think it's now maybe 15 or 14 million population. And, and yeah, uh, Kunming is, uh, as Vera mentioned, Kunming and Yunnan, this region is a very beautiful place with a rich uh, nature. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it has a very special history and also um, connect with other countries um, like Vietnam and uh, Myanmar and others. Um, yeah, and I, my background was printmaking and graduated in 2004 from UNART University. And then I had my master's degree in um, art theory. And also my, my uh, graduation paper was about, um, the research was about the, the situationism and also local art practice. So um, I had did some, uh, um, I'll say research on those local uh, cases, yeah, showcases, um, like, like performances and, and different kind of projects. I'm going to talk a little bit about, about that later. And uh, yeah, I start my art practice since 2003, 2003 to 2004, yeah. And at the same time, I start to also work as an art organizer on curator and writer at the same time, yeah. In, in based in Yunnan and also in the last uh, 10 years, I traveled a lot to Europe, especially to the Nordic countries. That you know, one of the reasons was uh, because of my job. Uh, I was, uh, I used to be the art director at TCG Nordic Culture Center in Kunming, which has a quite rich network with Nordic countries like Sweden, Norway and Denmark. And um, yeah, I also went to other places in the world, mostly to the West, the Western countries. And um, yeah, that's my background. Um, my art mostly, um, I was mostly engaged in performance art since 2003. And also in last, in past two or three years, I started to work as a field recording uh, artist, so work with sound art. Um, recent years and also continue writing a lot and also organizing activities with different galleries and the museums and also yeah other uh, freelance uh, organizers so curators like Vera and others yeah that's um, about myself and we can talk more yeah if you have any question about my background um, yeah and during this talk in please also excuse my English level if I, I was stuck somewhere and um, yeah, maybe Vera can continue with the um, introduction about our group. Okay, thanks, uh, Lo Fei. And your English is great. It's, it's much better than my Chinese. Um, okay, I will continue about... Uh, uh, started with uh, the Kunming International Situation in Society. Uh, I first met Luofe when I was still on my bicycle journey. This was the end of 2016. Uh, we met at Nordica Gallery and we spent a whole evening talking about art and cycling. Uh, by the time I got to Kunming, I was, I was really starved for um, art, culture, having just crossed uh, Central Asia. So it was great to 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 meet someone and 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 have that kind of conversation uh, that was not about cycling or how to get food or <laughs> where to sleep for the night. Um, so when I returned to Kunming after finishing my bicycle journey in Tokyo, we we met up again, uh, and our first project together was the human driven ex exhibition. Um, it was a continuation of a cycling and art concept that I had first developed in Amsterdam with uh, Chero Galloway, uh, a designer who is now based in New Zealand. Um, Lofe was, was the, the curator who brought together, I think around 50 artists who all contributed work that was related to cycling. So it was a huge exhibition. Um, I got to design one room um, where I installed uh, chapters of a book that I'm that I'm working on. That is uh, the working title is uh, a short history of long bike tours because bike touring has now been a thing for about 150 years. Um, 
And of course, when people first started their bicycle journeys, uh, there was no internet, there were no smartphones. Uh, it was incredibly dangerous. Um, I think the third person who set off from London uh, to China was never found again. Um, the first two made it and, and they wrote a, a great book about it with, I think, some, some um, alternative facts, uh, but still a great read. Um, so I would like to explore that arc that the people who are leaving on a big bike journey today still have that romantic idea that they are going to be completely disconnected. Uh, but of course they bring drones and they have an Instagram account and they become influencers and they try to get sponsors. Uh, so they are definitely not as much in the moment as those first cyclists were. Um, I'm old enough to, to have traveled uh, in the time without internet, so I still know what it's like to, to, to send postcards or to have to pay $5 per minute uh, to call your family home. Um, so I'm very interested by, by that change. Um, and I love my smartphone and I use it all the time, but at the same time, I, I miss that time of, of really being uh, lost to the world. Um, so that, that was um, a big part of that, that exhibition as well, um, and somehow sideways related to situationism as well. Um, not long after that exhibition, uh, I met Sean Duffy, um, who is an amateur uh, philosopher. Um, he's, he's one of the most well-read people I know. So we enjoyed uh, discussions about uh, philosophy, music, life in general. And soon, Sean Duffy, Lofe and I, we found our shared uh, fascination for the situationists. Um, and this, especially uh, in the light of uh, China's big contradiction, uh, a society that is governed by a Marxist political model. And at the same time, it's a perfect society of the spectacle. Everywhere you look, uh, there are passive consumers who are glued to their smartphone screens and who are being enticed to shop, shop, shop. So we decided to, to explore this contradiction. Uh, we started with uh, small meetups to discuss what we had been reading, what we were thinking, uh, to share knowledge. Uh, we invited like-minded artists and theorists um, very soon we started to practice uh, derive uh, in an effort to really be in the city, uh, to have an embodied experience uh, of our surroundings rather than experience through a screen. So the Kunming International Situationist Society was born, which we called KISS for short, of course. Um, in 2019, we organized uh, the first KISS Fest, uh, which was somehow somewhat motivated by questions from other Kunming artists who were very curious about our uh, secretive small meetings. Uh, they wanted to know what we were up to. Uh, and last December, we held the second KISS Fest. Um, now, Luofe will explain in more depth about KISS and other related artists and their practice in China. Okay, thank you, Vera. Uh, so now I'm going to share my screen. Um, moment. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, here I'm going to give a um, um, brief introduction about um, my research or the, the relationship between, between the, the Situationism idea or Situationist um, International and uh, local art practices in this was uh, a title and um, actually it was um, a long um, how to say um, presentation but here I just gave you um, a very brief one. 
In, and all the examples was from uh, 2005 to 2015, and uh, and they called it uh, situational construction in inland contemporary art. And uh, think before my talk or or people also ask those questions, what's the um, relation between, um, say between the spectacle society and China? Because the spectacle society theory was very much about capitalism uh, society based, uh, capitalism based society. And uh, here I here I just give very um, brief explanation. Um, here I say, here we say global, uh, globalization uh, is also the globalization of spectacle society, and also in Guy uh, theory, he was also talking about there are there are three models of the spectacle society. The one is um, diffuse um, a spectacle society, for example, like American or France, and uh, also uh, concentrate. Uh, spectacle society like Russian or Germany uh, in that time. Yeah. And also next, the third one was uh, mixed spectacle society. I think in China it's very typical. Uh, yeah, they mixed um, everything. And the second point was about uh, situationist international and avant-garde art movements. And because of this uh, um, connection in Early time in the early age uh, or early stage of the the um, situationist international, so it has a very strong avant-garde um, spirit or the way of doing in the beginning of the group, um, like letterists movements and, and others. So so I think many artists, especially in contemporary artists, very much in. Influenced by that, but many of them they, they had have no idea. And here in China, the modern artists or contemporary artists we normally learn from the West in the beginning, and uh, uh, through the research you understand that there is also very important root which was from the Situationist International, uh, not only the art practice but also the conceptions. The third background was the um, definition. Here I focus on this term, which was called um, situational construction, because uh, in the situationist international or in the spectacle society theory, there are many, many uh, good things to talk. And, uh, but here I only focus on situational construction, which I may call it as a method or strategy that can be used in contemporary art practice. Uh, yeah, so this was connected with um, the fourth point. And uh, also for many uh, local artists, uh, I mean in Yunnan, many artists when they use the uh, situational construction as a method or strategy, but it's normally it's as um, it's a uh, unconscious um, way of using. They didn't know where it comes, but they just use it. Or, or they thought it 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 become uh, it comes from like fluxus or comes from other avant-garde movements. Um, but uh, there is a very an uh, interesting, I um, say, a way of using from the situational construction. Um, and the, the sixth point was that in contemporary art development, there was a line we can easily see that from the situational construction to relational aesthetics, which was from a French uh, curator Nicolas Boriaud's theory, and to uh, socially engaged practice. So that means this kind of um, um, Situational construction um, practice is already in the roots of contemporary art practice through in in the past 40, 40 years or sixty years. Um, 
uh, for, for 40 or 30 years. And, uh, and the seven point was that about the, the field, where do we practice this? Mostly we call it uh, in everyday life. That means that's not only happen in the white cube space, but mostly in the fields, in everyday life, like in the village or in, in the alternative spaces and in the, in the corner of the cities. Uh, so this was the background. Um, yeah, here is the definition of uh, situational uh, construction. Yeah, a, a, from from the first issue of International Situationist, uh, a moment of life, concretely and deliberately constructed by the collective. A collective organization of uh, unitary embrace and a game of events. Uh, that also, uh, this definition is, um, I'll say, for me, it's interesting to see how this uh, definition can be used in art and how can we find kind of a, a method from from it. So we, we, we could see um, uh, some keywords like a moment, moment of life. Yeah, this was also from, uh, yeah, anyway, yeah. And the game of games, uh, game of events, the games and the events. So so according to this, those keywords, we, uh, we can review what already happened in, in local art practice or local projects. Here, I would like to share um, six, um, projects or six um, um, programs, but not only in those six, but there are much more. Uh, the first one was about Jianghu project um, since 2000, um, 2005 to 2006, and the uh, Huddingbun artist book project, it's about artist book, and the uh, Lijiang war painting project, uh, that's a war painting project in Lijiang, another um, Tom a very old town um, in in northwest of um, Kunming. And Above the Clouds performs art festival and also a film remaking project by Na Yingyu, uh, a filmmaker from Beijing. And also our case um, uh, events like walks and festivals. Yeah, uh, here, here, yeah, in each project uh, here, I only give you um, a simple introduction and some images so you can have kind of idea about what it is. The Jianghu project was in 2005 to 2006. This project was uh, very popular in that time. I was uh, one of the, the co-founders of the project and also um, uh, I was artist in the project, and uh, in that project we have engaged a lot of thousands artists uh, involved in that time, uh, come from China and also many other countries. And in that year, in those two years, we almost have um, every month we have one activity, exhibitions or walking or or, or traveling, or or party, just yeah, yeah di many different kinds of um, activities, like even a barbecue here. Um, and uh, in 2006, there was um, a, a prize about the most popular exhibition in China. Uh, we got number two um, in, in that time, the number one was the Shanghai Biennial exhibition in Shanghai, and we won the second one. Uh, we could see it was uh, very popular in China in that time. Uh, it, it was mostly based um, about uh, experimental art, you know, like performances, installations. Here, for example, here is one of the projects uh, in Jianghu. Um, it was called Mobile Jianghu, which was um, a video or film festival, but we made um, same a mobile 
a small car to we 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 move it in the in the city in all the corners so we screaming um, all those short videos or experimental videos uh, in the city yeah and and uh, the, some others also happened in in Amsterdam actually the uh, the second row here it was from Amsterdam yeah so uh, this was kind of an example uh, and this uh, Jianghu project was very much not only about experimental art but also very much about uh, how to explore the possibilities in the city and how to connect in the audience uh, in that time uh, many audience they are yeah, every time the audience are much much more than artists uh, who came to the exhibition because in normal uh, art events it's uh, the audience mostly from the art circle but in Jianghu projects more than 90 percent uh, we have no idea where you know, who they are um, yeah, this was from the Jianghu project. Yeah, it was some of them in the city, some of them in the nature, and some of them in the traveling. And the second project was called He Dingben Artists Book Project. It was um, it was about artists' um, self-producing book. Um, it was from 2006. Uh, artists, every artist um, provide their own works or their own texts or their own image. And, and we make a book together every year, every spring festival. Um, so it's a very, how to say, it becomes another kind of um, alternative festival. So every year when we hold this um, um, events everybody understand okay now it's almost the end of the year and it's um, yeah the new year is coming uh, but every year when we held this event it's not only book uh, making it's also a lot of gathering and um, every year every time we have around 100 artists every year at least 90 or 80 artists every year so it's kind of a collective uh, life uh, we eat together, make food together, and also write this, uh, what do you call, um, couplet, uh, the, the Chinese traditional uh, wishes. Uh, for example, here, <laughs> interesting piece from artist Wang Xiangdong. Uh, in this year, we did this event in the countryside, and this artist made the traditional um, couple it to the modern political uh, expression and uh, here on on the sides one says freedom of thoughts and freedom of expression on the top here it says human rights and this is very um, political and also very modern um, it's normal this kind of content never appears in the, the Chinese traditional couplets yeah, and in the Chinese traditional couplets, uh, couplets normally talk about the good wishes of uh, uh, for the new year. Uh, and uh, he made a lot of this kind of uh, new couplets and uh, give to their uh, his neighbors and also the the villagers. And the third uh, project was uh, performance art. Yeah, when we're talking about situation is. Um, practice very much related with um, performance art or the performance arts very much uh, also uh, has a strong roots in situationist idea um, for example this year in 2009 uh, it was in a tourist um, park it's a mountain park and it, we we have um, walking uh, trails um, made by wood you can see here on uh, on the ceiling and so the tourists walking through there but in this uh, in this performance this artist from um, 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 uh, her name is Kolinia Zong yeah it, this piece called urban exploring so we 
we climbed and walked in the um, in the button uh, in, under under the the roads. Yeah, and in this piece on the right, uh, from Daniel Oswander, uh, he was the front in this line, and uh, he was using his mobile phone um, uh, shooting the landscape, and uh, everyone shooting uh, seeing the landscape from the screen in the front of the person. So everyone got the landscape uh, or see the landscape only from the screen of the front. So this was also uh, related with um, the spectacle society. We, yeah, we see the reality, we see the beauty through the screens. Yeah, uh, this performance festival also happened um, in many different places, in the nature, in the city, in the tourist places, and it's an international performance festival. So every week we got um, uh, different artists from different countries. But last year in 2020, we only did it in local and uh, we had uh, some online activities. I was normally, I am the observer in this festival to write some text and sometimes also work as artist in this festival. And uh, this project was called a war painting project in Lijiang. Uh, Lijiang, there, there is an um, um, organization called the Lijiang Studio, um, based in Lijiang, in, in a village in countryside. I used to be the project coordinator in Lijiang Studio, um, and in 2008 to 2010, the, the, there was a project called war painting. The war painting project was very much about the wars, uh, I'd say, very much about the, the ownership, the ownership of the discussion on ownership of those uh, villagers wars. Uh, for example, in this picture, um, it's um, a villagers home and but on their Wars outside, you know, the the war near the road. Normally, the there those local uh, companies, for example, like mobile phone companies, those big companies, they just write their slogans on their wall without any agreement, with uh, without any asking. Uh, so the, those companies, they just write their advertisements, uh, just paint it. And so in this project, um, we cooperate with local villagers and we uh, and we invited many artists from China and also from abroad came to this village. The only thing is that the villager, the owner of the wall, need to agree, uh, they need to say yes to the artist. So the artist can paint whatever they, they want, but the, 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 the farmers need to say yes. Uh, this was first time t t for them to do this project, I mean, for the farmers, but also for, for the artists. Um, for example, in this picture, uh, there was an uh, advertisement in Chinese. It says, if farmers want to get rich, China mobile um, information will help them. Um, but this artist changed the slogan to if China Mobile wants to get rich, farmers' information will help. Uh, but in the in the same uh, forms, in the same style, but change the meaning. Um, but many people didn't recognize actually, because because it looks so similar. Um, but also this remind our um, one of the, uh, the one method of situational construction, which is called re, uh, re or uh, hij hijacking. Um, yeah, this was the war painting project. This was also from uh, Lijiang Studio uh, residency program, the artist Na Yingyu. He was uh, doing a, re uh, a film remaking project. Uh, from the original film was from uh, the very early time in the 50s, I think. Um, 
in the 1950s called the smoke and signals from the border it was about the um, uh, in the border of china in the border between china and um, and myanmar uh, the local uh, minorities they were occupied by by other enemies uh, but our uh, army came to how to say uh, set them freedom and uh, and help them to set up uh, like um, uh, what, what do you call that uh, help them to to set up the the basic construction um, for the village um, but the, the the film in that time the most interesting thing was uh, that film was the first color film in new china and uh, a lot of um, um, how to say minority um, description or or minority stories. So for most other Chinese, could say okay those uh, minorities how do they like and how um, yeah in in their culture how how it looks like. But the problem was in that time most the not most every actors are not original um, minority not not original minorities they are just chinese han people and um, um, so in this re film remaking projects nying you invited local villagers so they are not actors they are just local villagers to uh, react the whole film um, according to the original film so it's every every image was kind of um, uh, remaking um, repeated again, but made by the the, the local villagers. This was also um, uh, uh, remind uh, the rewriting uh, strategy. Um, yes, also remind the Guidobo's film so um, Society of Spectacle. If my talk was too long, just uh, remind me. Yeah. Uh, here, so in my research in that time, uh, I compared with um, the historical situationist international and local contemporary art practice. Uh, the differences uh, was that in situation, uh, situationist international, the key word was revolution, uh, revolution. And they made uh, the revolution, art, and life as um, as a, a circle that um, equals each other. Um, but so when they make art, it's it's the revolution, and that's for everyday life. Um, but uh, but of course, uh, especially that was for the first uh, period of the the group. But here. Um, in China, it was not about revolution. Most of those projects are for art. And uh, instead of a revolution, here, the local people, they found gameplay is the keyword. They tried to um, make lots of gameplay in different places. Through gameplays, we reconnect with others. And this was the um, kind of a conclusion from my research um, in that time. Um, and then it's about our case, the Kuomin International Situationist Society. Um, so the events to date, okay, here uh, it's not include the, the latest one. But anyway, yeah, uh, here we, we had already organized three or four uh, walking and also two festivals and some few uh, book reading events in Kuanmin uh, since, uh, since 2018. Uh, this was the first walking. It was uh, 2018, December 9th. We walk um, through the whole city almost. Uh, we walk from the um, Kunming University campus from the south here and to the cent very central of the old city called Green Lake Park, which is uh, was nearly 40 kilometers. We walked the whole day 
the, in, the, the interesting thing was that every worker, we care our own stool. Um, so uh, we can create our own places in this uh, long distance. Because in Chenggong, uh, Chenggong was the university campus. In Chenggong, it's a huge, it's, it's huge roads. It's about, let me see, six or eight, um, what do you call, um, ways for, for, you know, for cars. But you know, it's very, it's super wide um, road for, for driving, but not really for walking. We have tried sometimes to, to walk through the, the traffic lights in, in, uh, during the, the green lights, but it seems we cannot uh, uh, make it because the lights was designed for cars, not for walkers. Uh, so we walk from the morning in the morning and to the evening. Uh, this was from this picture was from the Green Lake Park. It's an old building. Yeah, this was um, we walk with the stools from the new town to the old town of Kunming. Um, yeah. And this was the second walk in 2019, in summer. Uh, we did a sound walk of, according to the, the, let's say, the historical memory of uh, uh, the ancient war in, China, uh, in Kunming. Uh, but actually, in Kunming, we can only find, the, the, only, the only war we can find was in this zoom, in this zoo, uh, in it's called Yuan Tong Zoo. It's I think it's only 50 or or, or 30 meters long left. The others already uh, destroyed it in the 50s, in 1950s. So, but uh, according to our uh, research, we we still found where it used to be. So we walk um, walk along it. And it's um, about eight and a half kilometers, so it's um, a small one. That was from the Ming Dynasty, um, ancient wall, and uh, we also found that the the wall today becomes malls, and because th in those places uh, it's only shopping malls, and uh, the more the more become new wall. Yeah, through the sound walking, we recorded a lot of noisy uh, because of the mall and the shopping, the sailing. Yeah, so this was uh, from uh, 2019 sound walking. The third walking was also, um, it's very much related with, um, um, let's say, specific events or specific news in Kunming. Uh, in October, there was an old village in South Kunming, and there were two or more very old buildings and, and garden, uh, which was built in the Qing Dynasty. Um, but because of the business developments, um, the whole village was almost gone. Only one garden, only one house was left there. Um, and uh, so we uh, actually, uh, our case group was invited by some other friends to say if we can do this kind of events, we can, to say, we can get more attention. And so maybe we can, through this working, we can protect the, the old building, the, the old house. Um, yeah, so we walk through the, the village. It's almost... Um, most of the buildings were destroyed, and this was an old house. And we walk through the village and cross some other new living areas, and cross the border between the the wetland park and the city. And it was nearly ten kilometers walking through through the south part of the city, and we walk to the 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 what do you call the, the bank of the the lake yeah and uh, but the lucky thing was after the walking after a few two one or two weeks 
the government promised to protect, uh, to keep the old house. Then otherwise, the old house will be be gone. Yeah. So that was uh, that was was a good one. And uh, yeah, those two posters was about our uh, last two festivals. The first one was in 2019, and uh, the second one was in 2020, December. Yeah, so in th those two festivals we held in the um, the Whitefield, the Whitefield uh, bookstore in Kunming, which was one of the most nice uh, bookstore in Kunming. And uh, we did some uh, film screaming and uh, sound um, performance and also walking practices um, in during the festival. So here is my talk. Hope um, you get the yeah those points what I have shared. Um, yeah, maybe Vera can continue sharing um, uh, a video clip from the second festival. Um, the sure. second uh, walk that uh, you are now showing a video of is the sound walk, isn't it? Uh, no, we want to share uh, a small edit from the walk that we did for the last uh, his fest. Okay, um, then I'm going to have a question about the second walk first, uh, while this is fresh in our minds. Uh, the second walk was a sound walk. Can you say a little bit more uh, as to how that was actualized. How was it a sound walk? Uh, Lofe, maybe you can say a bit more about that. Yeah, uh, the sound walk, um, yeah, it, uh, we, we follow the, the, the ancient war, um, the, what's it called, the lines, and uh, but there was a little mistake actually uh, because of the, some of the roads was not there anymore, uh, and we also did little mistake. But anyway, generally we walk start we started from the zoo, and then we walk along the the wall. Um, yeah, and um, it was actually it was not a cozy walking experience because it's quite noisy. In a lot of um, uh, selling shops and uh, and yeah and that's um, that was the ex experiences from from the walking and uh, yeah I had a, a little um, how to say I, I had added um, a piece of the sound walking if you want to listen I, I can share the link later yeah. So you're saying that the focus of the walk was listening to the environment and also recording what you were hearing. Is this how it was a sound walk? Basically, what, yeah, it was about that, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Mm. Vera? Uh, yeah, I will, I will share a, a very short video um, of the walk that we did at our, at our last uh, KISS Fest. Um, what's happening at the beginning is what people have to hand in their phone because we actively want them to get lost in the city, and we used uh, we used the oblique strategies to um, to get people to 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 play in the city. Now, uh, the first question I have um, uh, is uh, very much related to uh, Lofay, what you also presented in one of your slides, which uh, is the uh, contrast between how um, situationist theory uh, operates between or on the fields between revolution, art and life, whereas in China it's art, life and game playing, according to uh, your slide, right? And um, this goes also back to uh, Vera, what you mentioned in the talk that the little talk that we had on Friday, where you brought up Constant Nieuwenhuis and um, his idea of the city as a playground in his new Babylon, right? Or you didn't bring up new Babylon, you brought up Constant Nieuwenhuis, but uh, it's of course uh, the relevant, I think, part of Constant Nieuwenhuis's work. 
And you probably also know, and if others don't, then um, what I find very interesting about uh, Nieuwenhuis's concept of New Babylon is that he originally called it Deriville. Deriville. So the city of the derive, the city of the drift, uh, which is an obvious nod to uh, situationism and the Boer um, and uh, his ideas of uh, the society as a spectacle. However, um, uh, as you probably also know, Nieuwenhuis's goals with his uh, new Babylon were very much about self-fulfillment and self-satisfaction, um, which makes Nieuwenhuis's objective of his ut utopian vision uh, a little bit uh, in contrast to uh, the Boer's idea of countering the spectacle, right? Um, because um, uh, Nieuwenhuis is uh, occupant of the new ba of the city of his new Babylon is more like Huizinga's Homo Ludens. Right. It's about the, the, the about man as uh, someone who plays, whereas uh, for the Boer, it's very much uh, a person, the, per, the, the, the inhabitant of the city very much reacts against the spectacularization of society. Now, my question for the both of you is, is Kiss more in the spirit of the Boer or Niemenhuis? Um maybe this is this is a discovery for me too but maybe this is something where Lofe represents one and I represent the other <laughs> um, because I'm very much uh, struggling with with this with the society of the spectacle on a personal level and for me uh, the situation is 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 maybe a way out is a, is a way to act against that but as Lofe just said it's 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 about play in in the city um what do you think lofe <laughs> yeah i agree i think um yeah this was the, the one this was a, a common yeah point we where we meet in this group and there also yeah that's why also in this group lots of young people um yeah the game play in the city uh, in this system but at the same time um because in, in our past walks, although only four times, four walks, but also in, in the third walk, uh, if you notice that so from the old village, from the village's ring walk to the, to, to the lake, uh, we found a lot of local people joined our walk. A lot of new, new, uh, new people, I have no idea where they come from. Uh, but we also found, because in China, uh, the city changed so quickly um, uh, and changed so much. So the memory is memory can be erased very quickly. It's uh, yeah. this was also the differences between China and Europe. In Europe, we could see the history on the streets, but here you can see everything is new. Uh, so I think many for many people they try to understand their history. They try to keep the history through through walking or through kind of a gameplay. And so in the third walk, we we actually, we invited another artist, Cheng Xinghao. He's a, a very active artist in China. And uh, he gave a lot of introduction, a lot of uh, information about the village, about the, those farmers, because he did a long time uh, field research in, in that village. So he had a very good uh, relationship with the v local villagers. And so through this walking, we found that, yeah, uh, we, we need to, how to say, connect to, to our neighborhoods through walking and connect with the, 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 how to say, keep the memory for the city. And if through walking we can keep the village, keep the house, keep the old house, that would be wonderful. So finally, we we found the walking was uh, worth to yeah. So finally, we 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 get the house be kept. Yeah. I want to ask. Can I ask a question? Oh, okay. This is you. you bring, same theme: re, uh, revolution and as game or and gameplay. Now, uh, mm -hmm. a sort of equivalent you could put to this as change as cyberspace. So obviously revolution produces change and mm, gameplay mm. happens in, in, in cyberspace. I'm wondering mm, what the potential mm. for change 
in cyberspace is in relation to situationist theory, i.e., where the, um, the Chinese stance lays, and that might be able to tie down a little bit more that connection between the, the Babek. What, what, is your, what is your attitude to change and, and the potential mm -hmm. for some place to have the same sort of change, or is it a different sort of change? Is it change in cyberspace, or is it change in life, everyday life? Mm -hmm. and what is the link mm -hmm. with cyberspace, with situationist theory as being situated mm -hmm. not so much in cyberspace, uh, 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 as in actual everyday life, and how do you make that? How do you justify that um, that, that, that 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 gap? Yeah. Um, yeah. Firstly, when I say revolution, that was the revolution in that time in the 60s and 70s, and that was a real revolution. It was not not something else. It was um, the revolution happened in. Uh, through the students' movements and also happened in the whole society, and that was a radical change, the radical change. And they want to do the revolution in everyday life. Uh, but that's the, the, the frame was based on the capitalism. Yeah. Uh, but here in China today, here my, um, my concern was very much on art circle. Uh, but also through art practice, we can connect others, not only in art circle. Uh, so the change was firstly about art themselves, art practice, but also through this uh, practice, how can we connect with, reconnect with others? Uh, and he, also today, it's not a revolutionary time. Um, today is what we can do or what we individuals can do in China today. I think not much, we, not that much actually. At least it's not, there is no revolution waiting for us or, or we, can, we can lead a revolution. Um, I think the thing we can do is to, how to say, to if we do the change, we can do some, um, make some micro changes uh, through the small groups, through, uh, through the different and active activities in different yeah. communities. Okay, just to yeah, follow up. Uh, sorry, go on. Yeah, so to follow up on that, uh, again, in a way you're substituting for life which in a revolution, you're in Chinese society, you narrowed it down to two areas, art practice uh, and reconnecting with others. I'm just wondering mm. how the, the potential for change in this micro thing mm. would, mm -hmm. would happen, how it would look in, in the way in which you do reconnect with others. Forget art for one side, but put the reconnecting yep, with yep, others. Yep, how would yep. it change the others, you know, like your friends, their social mm -hmm, attitudes, mm -hmm, what they mm -hmm. do as a consequence of the sort of interaction that you make. I'm just wondering where that active element lays. I think um, I think it's um, it's a long term gameplay, but every time we do the projects or a working, what we can achieve, we we cannot settle, say, a long distance aim. We can. We, what we can settle is what we can see front of our step. You, you uh, uh, understand what I mean? I mean, we we can only make a small aims, make different small aims, but not a big aims. So through this kind of um, practice, we may change little by little. And every time we gather different group of people, different communities, yeah. I, I would like to add to this a little bit, uh, if I may. Uh, I think what, yeah. say, what you're also describing, specifically in contrast between, um, let's say, classical situationism and what you are practicing in uh, Kunming, is that, um, well, in my opinion, at least, um, uh, the Boris situationism is very reactionary and very individual. Whereas what you're describing is very inclusive. Right? You are, mm -hmm. and I think the video mm -hmm. also that you showed uh, shows this. Um, it's very much about bringing people together and putting people in here and now. Uh, although yes. the latter is also something that very much is something that uh, De Boer would uh, would agree with. 
Um, but another thing, the second thing that I would like to point out in response to Bob's uh, uh, question about uh, uh, the digital sphere is uh, specifically because you ask people to um, uh, put away their cell phones, um, you're actually distancing yourself a little bit from uh, the digital sphere. You're really showing uh, that the people do not have to experience their uh, uh, their, 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 their or society through their screens. Um, and uh, with that, uh, bring people together outside of the digital sphere. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's gameplay, not as gameplay as you understand it, but actual playing games. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Um, what, what for me is interesting in this that you're put away uh, uh, it, uh, people's cell phones is the cards that you were holding up, uh, as you maybe know, or as some others maybe know. I'm one of the guys behind this little cell phone app, which is called Derive app, which basically uses the same methodology um, to uh, to make people more aware of their surroundings. Eh? It presents them with little task cards to uh, just nudge them into experiencing their environment. Uh, uh, or their urban environment um, in unique and different ways, in ways that are unique to uh, to themselves, to their own uh, views of uh, their environment. Um, but it requires the cell phone. <laughs> so they still, in a way, have to experience their environment through their cell phone because it's a cell phone app, right? Um, um, but you're using cards, which I think is good because it really requires people to, uh, to not look at their cell phone. Um, a related... Uh, I have a question to the, uh, related to this, uh, specifically about how to experience uh, your environment and how you facilitate this in, uh, with KISS uh, and the events that you organize. Um, and it's based on uh, an essay, one of the essays in Lofay's book, uh, which is called To Start From Art, which you wrote in 2014, right? And um, in one of these essays in your book, you discuss with, sorry, I forget who it was with, the, that it is the artist's responsibility to recharge society. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, mm. I keep an eye on what you do. Um, so mm -hmm. would you argue that uh, the Situationists uh, recharged society? And would you argue that KISS recharges society? And if so, how or if not, uh, why not? Yeah, that was uh, the book and the articles was, um, yeah, it's it, it's a collection of my essays and interviews um, published in 2014. And uh, um, many of them was much earlier. So um, my thought was also developed in the past years. And, uh, and in that book, I think the, the main uh, concern was, uh, the main topics was on, uh, the responsibilities of the artists and also um, the spiritual uh, possibilities and yeah among the artists and uh, so um, but basically I think um, I think both for me personally I think both artists and also maybe kiss I don't know uh, how Vera thoughts uh, so I think both of them, or yeah, it's kind of a way, kind of a way to recharge the society, but but different different method, different strategies. Yeah. Can I add to that? Putting it another way, it's bringing together the many strands into which modern art is fragmented. So you're bringing it into your unity. So you you consider modern society or liberating society, also liberating our concept of modernism. Which underpins that. Sorry, I didn't get. Okay, what this this metaphor was of liberating society, the the hmm. the, the, game, the aim of uh, situationism, putting that in other words, and not looking at it in uh, everyday life, but like a finished art product or the tradition of uh, art in Europe, for example, in America. Now, over the 20th century, modernism has fragmented into many disparate elements. And part of the, the role of the situationist, possibly on a societal level, is to bring together these many disparate elements into a sort of unity. So the role of the artist is to direct people to know what to aim for. And I'm saying, is that in a sort of equivalent of bringing, could the, a, a methodology be 
through bringing together the many elements into which actual art has fragmented, you know, cubism, or whatever you want to call it. And that, in fact, walking art or performance art or whatever you want to call it could be a methodology for achieving this. And how would that be perceived through um, not Western eyes, but by Eastern eyes, by Oriental logic? Buddhist, I don't know what yeah. it is. Rather than, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. a general sort of question. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, if I understand correctly, um, I think, yeah, in my uh, research and all, when I review what already happened in, in local, in Yunnan, and as I, in the beginning, I mentioned that firstly, those artists or those projects accept KISS events. Most of the others, they, they, they didn't start from the Situationist International's um, theory or Spectacle Society theory. They start from somewhere else. But uh, the method and also the, or the effects already happened. Uh, and that we can see there is kind of a connection with um, with the Situationist International. Um, and, but the, also there's very big differences between here local practice and uh, the historical um, Situationist International. That was the first one was in China. I think there is still very strong uh, collective life uh, culture here. Uh, that was uh, different from the Western individuals culture uh, or the culture based on individualism. Uh, so here people try to gather together and always try to gather together um, in those projects. Uh, for example, the book, every year over 90 or 100 artists and also in Jianghu project, every time we had 300 art, um, people in a place. and. Uh, um, and, and yeah, um, and the, the second difference is, was that uh, situation in this international, the historical one was very much see the field, the city is the field. So the everyday life change happened in city and this, the city is the framework. But in China, a lot of things still happen in countrysides and the, those practice also happen or between the countryside and the city, for example, like the third walk from the the Qing Dynasty's old village uh, to we walked through that to the lake, and that village was, I'd say, was um, surrounded by the very new city buildings, new communities. So it's sometimes it's hard to distinguish the countryside and the city, and or they are very much mixed here or we have uh, a city, an uh, urban surface, but people's culture, people's everyday life is still cut from countryside. So yeah, so that, that's, uh, I think that the field is also different compared with the, the historical situation is international. Yeah, I don't know if I understand, uh, I answered your question. Yes, thank you very much. You've given me plenty of room for thought. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Um, I have um, another question that is um, not directly related to uh, KISS, uh, but it is somewhat uh, related to um, uh, situationism, uh, as well as uh, Lofe, your um, uh, visit, or at least one of your visits to Europe. Uh, you went at some point to, to well, you did, you did an exchange uh, in Zurich, Zurich being one of the uh, sister cities of um, um, Kunming, in fact, the second oldest sister city uh, of uh, Kunming. Um, and uh, on your trip, you went to Auschwitz. Um, and that was in part because you said that you wanted to have a better understanding uh, of um, the horrors of the Second World War in the context or and allowing you to reflect of the Japanese occupation of East Asia or you know, China and the Southeast Asia. Now, um, arguably, uh, situationism it was one of the um, uh, direct consequences of the outcome of the Second World War in Europe, right? It is very much, well, situationism, situationism is a reflection of the spectacularization of society, which is a direct consequence of, um, uh, the, of U.S. hegemony in Europe, which is a direct consequence of uh, 
a U.S. cultural influence in Western Europe as a consequence of the U.S. and the Soviet Union winning the war, winning the Second World War. Now, my question for yeah, both of you, I suppose, uh, is um, what have been, if any, the consequences, uh, the artistic consequences of Japan's occupation in Southeast Asia? Vera can talk first. I, I think you are much better qualified to answer that, <laughs> Chinese artist. Um, I think in art, mostly here, um, I think Chinese artists are not very much um, talking about that, at least in, in modern art. Um, and sometimes in, you know, in China, there is, um, what do you call that? The, the Chinese official fine arts society, which was um, supported by the government. Uh, they, they sometimes have this kind of a, a theme uh, creation tasks given to those artists. So they sometimes, yeah, but, but mostly that was not uh, individual reflections. That was mostly work has um, propaganda or, or just tasks. Yeah, um, I I think I think in Chinese contemporary art, um, the artists mostly focus on the transition. The the, the contemporary China, Chinese society's transition. How can we meet with the West? And when we meet with West, or when we crash with West, what is our identity or how can we find our roots uh, uh, in today yeah so I think that's much a bigger a question for the you know, for for the artists um, but the second world war I think many artists very much influenced from New Europe actually European artists uh, because uh, I think the, especially like the German artists influenced Chinese artists a lot, and they found that the uh, the German artists uh, did much deeper uh, reflection on their own history, and the he, the art was uh, looks deep, looks uh, heavy, and uh, also suffering a lot of suffering from the history, and uh, I think a lot of Chinese artists very much inspired from that. But compared with the Japanese art after Second World War, was much more uh, pop art so with much more um, uh, what do you call it? kawaii or something else. Yeah, cute. Uh, <laughs> yeah, cute. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think not very. I think not many Chinese artists in, uh, influenced by that level, um, but many Chinese artists. So uh, how to call? Um, they really inspired also from those like Japanese uh, modern calligraphers because they found they transfer the old tradition to the modern ways, and that mm -hmm. really inspired for the Chinese arts, but not from the yeah. the social way, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or historical I, I, level. I think also what I would like to add to this, uh, uh, at least for I think for my understanding, um, to. Um, explain what you're describing also is that for Europe or for European artists, um, history um, uh, began anew, you could argue, directly after the Second World War, right? This was an extremely traumatic event uh, that lasted six years or four or five, depending on where you were. Um, and Europe in 1945, in a way, restarted. But uh, things were not yet restarting in China, right? Uh, or in East Asia in general. Uh, it took another few decades before. Um, um, all the traumas uh, were over with. So it's not like uh, the Japanese uh, occupation and, or invasion and occupation and the end of that marked also the end of um, uh, the trauma that uh, South or East Asia and Southeast Asia saw. Um, okay, thanks. Um, uh, Jazz has a question about uh, 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 painting on the walls of the farmers in uh, uh, the well, countryside around um, uh, Kunming. Uh, jazz. Li Chang, yeah. Jazz is on mute. 
So thank you both for this. Um, it's really fascinating what you're, you're, you're doing and um, invigorating out there. Um, I, I, so my ears um, started to burn because I, m most of my work is very rural. And I'm really fascinated about how the rural um, interacts with artists and artists interact with the rural. And um, I think it's in, in your seven rules, as it were, um, you mentioned the unconscious use in the local. And I was wondering um, if, if that's the case, do you there pre therefore presume when the artist is doing the work, this is part of the question uh, of painting on the walls and um, adjusting the commercialism, um, is, is there a continued collective unconscious going on there between the farmers later on and what has happened to them as a result of the artist um, changing the commerce of the wall. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I think that art uh, that art project. Um, so first, uh, I was not the curator of that project, um, but I did some research on it. And um, the first three, the the key point was the ownership, uh, who owned the wall, because in the beginning the farmers has no idea at all, they just pens. The government and the big companies they just pen their walls, and they had <clears throat> no idea. But through this uh, game, through this art game, uh, try to rise up the ownership um, um, idea among the farmers. So uh, the artists normally they start with a, a sketch or something, uh, had an idea. So th it was a long negotiation with the farmer, with the farmer between the artists and the farmers, uh, because this related with at least uh, two things. The one was who can decide uh, mm -hmm. what what kind of image we can have on our wall, on our wall, because in countryside, the big house is not only one person living there, normally it's a big family. So who has the right to make decisions? So this was becomes another problem among the family. Uh, so finally, in the end, normally it's the, the man or the old, oldest man uh, yeah, who decides, okay, I, yeah, I say yes or no. Uh, the second was um, um, the, let's say, the art education among the farmers, because they all, what kind of art they normally like. But that's totally different from the artists, mm -hmm. uh, because the farmers, they like, for example, like tree or they like a bird. They like, um, yeah, they, the things they like, normally art they don't really like, or at least the tastes, it's, it's not the same thing. But so this also, it's, it was a big challenge uh, for the artists. Some of the artists, they cannot make it, they, they give up. Some of the artists, they, uh, they had long negotiation with farmers through Lijiang Studio Foundation, through the organization. I mean, uh, so, so the middle person, I mean, the organization play a very important role in this negotiation because they try to explain how, why this art is good, or why it's good, good wish for your house. Um, yeah, this was, um, uh, I'd say, the the background of the the projects or the the the, the highlights of the the projects. Um, I don't know if I understand. Uh, I answered your question. Uh, yeah. I I, I, I've missed that point about all the negotiation um, going on. Uh, really, the, 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 what I'm trying to sort of um, unpick is the, that um, by, by the artist making the work negotiated with the farmer, is the farmer, family, collective, whoever it is, um, able to um, be aware that there is other works of art um, 
I'll just give you an example because when I'm making my long walks, I speak to a lot of people um, and you know, there's always that confusion about, oh, so you're an artist, so, so what do you paint? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. You know, and that's a really yeah, big, yeah. Uh, it's a really big issue, I think. Um, yes. Through, it's through education, through, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, through the, the, the collective conscious and unconscious, I think. Mm -hmm. So it, mm -hmm. is, is the, by yes. doing that, is the farmer, is, is the, are those communities able to see something different or are they just going, oh, crikey, there's another bunch of artists here trying to do mm -hmm. something and, and then they just yeah. walk away. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think they are, after that uh, or in the, that project or after that project, uh, the farmers are much more concerned on their wars. They, they okay. don't really care if they are artists or they are someone else came to this village, but they really care about what's going to appear on the walls. Okay. I think the, the, the Chinese farmers, yeah, they, um, yeah, they, they, they never talk about the ideas. They, they, mm. or they don't talk idea what we talk. They, mm -hmm. they, they need something looks good, or sometimes the owners didn't say it good, but the neighbors say it good. That also gave, uh, uh, say, um, confidence to to the owner. Yeah. Um, I, w I would like to uh, chip in here. Uh, Babak mentioned it before. Um, when, when I moved to my village, I also had the dream of uh, starting an uh, artist in residency here. Um, and this is, uh, of course, tricky because I'm a, I'm a foreigner in a bi minority village. And um, I'm working on my Chinese, but it's far from fluent. Uh, uh, I'm surrounded by neighbors who, who have lived here for generations. Um, I'm living in one of their old houses. Uh, I know a little bit about the history. Um, and I'm an outsider who is basically bringing gentrification. Um, there are quite a few outsiders in this village. Uh, most of them are, are creatives from who are fleeing the big cities, uh, designers uh, from, from Shanghai, Shenzhen, Beijing, and they come here for the, for the clean air and the nature. Um, and we change the village just, just by being here. Um, mm -hmm. The villagers appreciate uh, the money, of course, like they get to restore an old house that no one wants to live in and, and they get to live in a, in a new concrete house with, with big glass windows and a, and a big flat screen TV, uh, which is wonderful. <laughs> But it's, um, it's, 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 I, I question every day, like, is, is it good I'm here? Uh, can I bring this? Uh, am, am I just doing it to, to be able to pat myself on the shoulder? Like I'm, I'm bringing something creative to this village, but at the same time, I'm, I'm totally disrupting um, um, the, the social fabric. So, yeah. It's uh, it's a question that that I can't answer just now, but I'm 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 talking to um, a project in a nearby village. That's a, a American couple who have been uh, operating in China since 1987 and who also love Yunnan. Uh, they have restored a villa, turned it into a hotel. They are organizing cultural events. Uh, they have very close ties with lo the local government and they employ a lot of local people. So I've been asking them, like, how do I go about it? Like, do I talk to the village chief? Um, I need, of course, very clear guidelines for the artists who come here if I invite them. Like, uh, you cannot go around um, asking difficult questions or upset people, of course. So, yeah. Never-ending questions, but it's uh, yeah, it's 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 kind of related. Like, do, do you bring something to the villagers, or are you disrupting? And, and maybe also, what needs to be pointed out with this is that you can't make the decision for others what they are supposed to like or not, right? You can uh, suggest something, but it's up to them to make the choice. Um, this, well, this this is obvious, of course, but specifically <laughs> around culture, this is often. Uh, yeah, not immediately realized by people who are offering culture. But can you say, Vera, a little bit more about uh, what your artist in residence program entails? 
Uh, well, this year there is uh, not much happening, of course, so I have a lot of time to further develop it. Um, I have talked to people who have been involved with uh, trans artists, with uh, the people behind China residencies, just, just to learn uh, from their experiences. Um, it's also tricky because it's in my house. So I want to limit it to uh, one, two, three artists uh, per year. Uh, so I can offer uh, a studio space and a space to live and I can connect people to local artists, venues, curators, uh, maybe uh, teach a class at an art history, uh, at, a, at an art college, uh, do a workshop at, at one of the venues. Um, so for now I'm keeping it quite broad but i would like to share definitely uh local culture and and crafts i don't just want to offer a space where an artist can can lock himself up and and make paintings that are completely unrelated uh to the chinese context because then i think you might as well save yourself the long flight and and stay in europe um and i'm i'm I would like to keep, uh, I'm just thinking of a theme, uh, keep it extremely wide and, and th I'm thinking of indigo blue because that's what uh, the local craftspeople work with and you can do anything with that. You can approach that in many ways, in, in, in performance, in, in, in textile, in, in, in ceramics, in... Um, so for now it's very wide. I have a I have a kind of short list of artists uh, because I work with uh, the the Dutch consulate in Chongqing, and they already had a, a, a short list of artists who were going to come to uh, Chengdu and Chongqing. Uh, and Malon, who is in this uh, uh, conversation, he was one of those artists. Uh, and then I have some artists from my own network who I would like to invite who are very suitable for working with uh, local minorities that, that already fits into their work. Um, but yeah, for, for now it's, 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 uh, it's still very open. So I'm, I'm also interested to hear like if, if you have anything to, to offer in this respect. Yeah, well, I'll need to give that a little bit of thought, uh, but uh, uh, I'm, it sounds, I, I think there might be something that uh, um, we could uh, talk about, um, but you bring up, I think Malon, and that might be the person who shares a name with Holland's greatest harmonica player. <laughs> and he has a question as well. You're, you're on that's, mute, Malon. Yeah, that's no, 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 that's true. I think you uh, refer to Toots Tielemans. Of course. Yes. Well, then I have to uh, confess another thing. My first name, Marlon, I'm named after the famous actor who was, uh, who passed <laughs> away a few years ago. My mother, she's a big fan of him, so. Um, uh, but I have, well, actually, I don't have a question, but I am asking myself something after this meeting. Um, uh, but then I have to tell you guys first something about myself. I. I make it short, but I have to introduce myself a little bit. I'm an artist and a teacher as well. And um, also I'm a fanatic cycler and I, I love to make cycling tours and hiking tours. So that's uh, something that we have uh, in common. And um, during those uh, cycling trips or um, hikings, I always meet a lot of people, of course. And also, I wonder myself as an artist, if I make a picture, make a drawing, write a story or whatever, do I do it for myself or do I want to show it other people and uh, let them participate in it? That's what I'm asking myself all, always. But I, after a lot of years now, I think I am someone who wants to uh, cooperate with other people and uh, let them be a part of what I'm doing. So that is, Lufe, what you mentioned also, I guess, in your uh, walkings in the city or villages or um, uh, in the green in the green surroundings of of Kunming. Um, um, I'm not someone who 
takes a souvenir home, uh, which is traditional. So I don't I don't need a, a, a Venetian chip when I come home from Italy, or the Colosseum in miniature when I when I visit Rome. <laughs> but what I do is something that I'm wondering about if it's uh, something that an artist an artist do or 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 a, or a tourist. I don't, I don't know what it is. For example, when I cycled in Central America, I took uh, 10 white t-shirts with me and I, uh, the people that I met on my way, I let them write something on it. And it was in Spanish, of course. And sometimes I did understand what they wrote and sometimes I didn't. So when I came home, I translated it and I got a nice souvenir. Sometimes I record voices. When I was in China a long, long time ago, I only recorded voices of people. I didn't understand one word. But after I came home, I went to this uh, Chinese restaurant and asked people to translate it for me. That is a kind of souvenir. <laughs> that's a kind of souvenir that I that I still keep in my house. And. I write stories about people, of course, that I meet. And but I'm telling you this all, all because uh, still I am wondering if it if it is a souvenir for me what I bring home. Is it is it art? Is it is it a play? Is it is it just a funny thing? I don't know. And actually, I don't care what it is. But. Uh, and never mind if I am asking myself this all my life. It, it doesn't matter. It's a good thing, actually, I think. But um, what I want to uh, try to tell uh, uh, Lou Fei is that uh, everything I do, in some way, I want to involve the people that I meet or the people that meet me. And uh, sometimes it's uh, in a, in a, in an uh, uncon unconscious way, I think it's the English word, and sometimes um, uh, it it is, it is me that takes the lead. So um, um, I am an artist that wants to uh, uh, that wants to let uh, participate other people in what I'm doing. Otherwise, that's what Vera told me, told us uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, she doesn't want an artist in her home that uh, is only uh, making a painting and not regarding to his surroundings. That's not interesting at all, I think. So um, that's what I want to tell you. And that's uh, uh, what I'm glad with after this meeting that I, well, I'm I'm very much confronted now with uh, what I have to call it, but uh, never mind. I I, I like uh, doing it. So thank you. I have you a question for, for you, Marlon. Um, uh, I'm fascinated. No, no, you're yeah. Well, thank you. Um, but yeah. my question for you is, uh, what's your website? I want to see these T-shirts. I don't have a website at all. Oh boy! But I can show you. Well, I can show you pictures. I can show you paintings. I can show you films. I can show you anything. But I don't have a website now. Okay, so we have to pick a, a month's worth of going through your work then. <laughs> <laughs> but may I uh, reiterate uh, the um, re usefulness then of uh, having an online presence where uh, you could just send us a link to show us these. What to me sound uh, like fascinating pieces of work that you create, uh, or that you collaborate on uh, as a result or during your trips. Um, although Jazz is very right in the chat saying uh, that your non-digitality um, is um, uh, well definitely unique in today's uh, day and age. Uh, but then actually, my next question is: uh, where, where is your next exhibition? Because if I can't find it online, I have to find it in person, no? No, no, no. I'm always working on projects, of course, and I'm, I'm, as I told you, I'm a teacher as well. So I try to teach my students uh, uh, also uh, a, a way of making uh, art or things anyway. And um, uh, I'm at the moment I'm working on a project where I um, uh, will show 13 uh, families in a village 
and the, those families, uh, I visit them and they uh, also are invited by me in my home. At the moment that's a bit tricky of course, but uh, some people they dare to come uh, on their own and then we talk to each other, I write stories about it, we, they bring their family uh, photo albums, the, the old ones, the analog ones, and we take uh, pictures of it and in the end it will uh, result in 13 huge panels with uh, 13 families on it and that is because this village it is uh, um, there there is a festivity going on it's uh, 1300 years uh, history now uh, so it was founded 1300 years ago and one of the photographs there are people with the same family name and they are 100 years uh, together so it can be a man of 80 years and two children of 10 and then you have uh, 13 times 100 years so that is uh -huh. what I'm working at the moment and um, also which I, village uh, is this that, that, well there's there's another thing going on in in the city where I live and uh, last year we had a uh, huge uh, exhibition in, in our city uh, because of a, a famous medieval painter called Lucas Castle. He was born here and there were a lot of um, festivities going on, also art events and now we are trying to make a booklet of it and making a film of it and uh, so that's not quite an exhibition but as a result of the exhibition we had already. So, uh, am I correct uh, in assuming that you live in Deurne? No, but it's uh, uh, I live I live in Helmond, and Vera knows where that is because uh, she was living in a village close by, and Deurne also is a village close by. Yes, you're correct. So, just before I came to this meeting, I cycled up and down Deurne six times this today which was very heavy because there's a lot of snow in uh, Holland at the moment. <laughs> ah, fascinating. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, ah, Vera went to secondary school in Durna. Well, Durna yeah. is indeed a, a world-class city. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, we are close to already two hours and uh, I have to admit that so far it's been extremely fascinating. So are you all ready to do it for another two? Or what shall we do? Uh, <laughs> well, maybe not, uh, because um, although uh, for me um, it's only th almost three o'clock in the afternoon for our two guests, it's running uh, towards uh, 2 a.m. And indeed, Vera is saying that she has to get up in four hours, um, which is still only 6 a.m. So that means that you're getting up way too early, right? Uh, you should really sleep uh, much longer. Um, so I, I think, uh, sadly, we should slowly move towards the end of this uh, uh, wonderful um, uh, cafe. I wanted to ask um, Vera, uh, where is, uh, if there is any uh, link for her artist residency? Get some more information? Or? Uh, I, I don't have so chat. much. Uh... Yeah, I, I don't have so much information yet about the artist in residency. There is a kind of uh, watch this space uh, page on my website. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so your yeah. website, did you have you put it in the chat already or? Yeah, it's in yes. the chat. Okay, okay, I will look for it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. But there I also, also think, uh, Vera, um, oh, go on. I, I, I usually post a blog post about uh, activities such as the our KISS events, uh, but also the, the Dutch Culture Nights that, that I organize uh, with, uh, with some budget from the Dutch Consulate. So I do uh, film screenings and uh, next up is also a Pecha Kucha event. I don't know if you are familiar with it. It's where yes. creatives uh, uh, share their, their inspiration or their work in 20 slides with 20 seconds each. So awesome. I'm bringing together uh, local craftspeople, uh, Chinese designers from all over China and also a couple of Dutch fashion designers 
uh, the first Pecha Kucha is going to be about uh, fashion and textile and the next one hopefully about uh, architecture and design. So, and I will share all of that uh, on my website. Oh, fantastic. And when will that uh, be on? Sorry, when did you say it's the, the first Pecha Kucha? When will, will that be? Uh, that will be the 27th of March uh, here in Dali. There is a place called uh, Dali Art Factory. So it's a big venue and uh, they give it to me uh, for free, basically, or I give them free content. content. And uh, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to uh, seeing how that's going to uh, to pan out and uh, what kind of uh, uh, exchange will happen there. Uh, it will be mostly in Chinese uh, because the majority of the audience here is Chinese. So there will be two uh, international speakers. Um, and yeah, because the format is so fast, I can't do translation. I'm just asking them to, to add a short uh, subtitle to each of the slides so that uh, people can follow. And then after each presentation, there will be Q&A and, &A and, uh, and that will be translated so everyone can join in. Okay, thank you very much. I, I would like to wrap it up slowly. Uh, what I, one question I didn't get to ask, um, so I'll, I'll throw it out there and um, uh, I'll let it percolate amongst the, the remainder of the participants here. And it's related to another aspect of uh, Lofay's earlier work, specifically what uh, you, Lofay, uh, also discussed in part in your book and what you worked on earlier, it's landscape art, because you worked with uh, landscape art uh, in the past, right? Um, and for me, what uh, is interesting about landscape art in general is that one of the most prominent landscape, glo globally recognized landscape artists is Brazilian. And I, I live in Brazil and his name is Burle Marx. You probably know of the guy. Um, and what, uh, um, what I find interesting about you having worked uh, in or on landscape art and now working on situationism, is that the landscape art is very purposefully designed to shape an individual's experience, right? It, it's, it, it conveys something because you have to experience a completely constructed environment. Whereas situationism is the exact obverse. It's about the personal's unique experience outside of what, what the environment tries to convey to the user. So that contrast, uh, I think, is fascinating. But we are out of time. <laughs> so it will be something uh, to uh, think about uh, as uh, some of us only get four hours of sleep um, um, and with that I very much would like to thank again Vera and Lofay um, I think it's been uh, really amazing uh, this, uh, this cafe we uh, have gone for two hours um, also uh, thanks very much for being able to be here in the middle of the night I know that it's uh, just a new year, new year in China, uh, so maybe um, it's a bit more customary to be up until the early hours uh, of uh, dawn uh, because of that, uh, yet uh, that would normally then I'm sure mean lighting fireworks and uh, drinking homebrew uh, and neither of these things uh, happened during this cafe, so I'm sure it was a little bit of a sacrifice for the two of you. I hope it was also uh, interesting enough. Um, and that we managed to ask at least a few nice and interesting questions. Um, and uh, yeah, unless somebody has a, a final word, does somebody have a final word? I'll take that as a no. Uh, I, I, I thank you very much, and I hope to all see you uh, in uh, two weeks' time when we've got uh, um, Hannah and Michael from Gesso, who uh, have made a very recent uh, or have recently created a an app that facilitates um, sound walks in mostly the United States. So, uh, and they talk about democrat, democratize, the democratization of uh, uh, storytelling. Thank you very much. And, sorry. I've got a final thought. Bob's got a final on, thought, Bob. can I say? Okay, here we go. Yeah. One of the main things, uh, what I understand to be modernism was world government. This has been lost sight of and by the, uh, the way you pointed out the link between the country and the town, it was this, uh, this insolubility that flawed communism in Russia and proletarian and ag agrarian societies. Your hope presented in Chinese situationism is because of this, it might find a missing link through art rather than revolution. 
So that I, my hope and my dreams are with what you're progressing with. Solid. Thank you very much, Bob. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, thank you very thanks much. again for all, and see you in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.